Welcome back everyone to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out the Okio Cam T Plus. Now I have taken a look and reviewed another webcam by Okio Labs um, on my channel. You can check that video up here. Um, that webcam I still use to this day for working from home um, and conference calls and everything else. Now Okio Labs did provide this to me um, at no cost. They're not paying me for this video either, um, but I do want to, I am curious about this because I am, um, if you can tell the difference in background here, I am looking to potentially uh, make some content um, in the mechanical keyboard space. Um, so this is a desk mat that I actually picked up, a Koi Mizu uh, desk mat. Um, so I thought that this would be a good opportunity to kind of get a different uh, point of view potentially for kind of keyboard builds and things like that to help out. Um, so this is actually used more for a educational um, kind of uh, use case um, in terms of uh, reading books. It, but um, there's a dry erase board built into this as well. Um, so we'll get into the unboxing real quick. This has a five megapixel camera. Um, so you, and the quality, I believe it's gonna be about 2K um, in terms of quality output. Um, this is 90 bucks, you can pick it up on Amazon. I'll leave the link down in the description. So you got your packaging. And what's interesting about this is that you're pretty much able to um, control everything on the, the device itself. So here's some uh, literature. You're gonna definitely want to uh, read through this in terms of a startup guide. Um, so let's get right into the actual hardware of it. Um, so you have a dry erase marker. So again, this would be great for teachers um, and any sort of um, educational space um, for like math, for example. You have a microfiber wiping cloth for that dry erase board. And dry erase only, warm damp cloth, don't use chemicals basically. Um, definitely read over that and to make sure the dry erase board stays intact. Um, here is the base of it and then this will unfold just like such. And then there's one more that unfolds here. So there is the dry erase board. It has a matte finish, and this will allow weight to be distributed appropriately across the, the surface of your, your desk. Um, here is the camera itself. Here is the USB cable, and this is all on hinges right here. So this is interesting. So this will undo like that, and then this goes like that. And this here will then at that point so here's that arm that extends out, and then this will go into its triangular mounting base right here, which then at this point, this will, you can adjust to whatever angle, right? And then here is the camera underneath there. And then this also has an option to actually mount onto like a, a tripod of some sort, if you so wish, so that's pretty cool. And here are those buttons. So we have uh, four, three different buttons. One button is gonna be a auto kind of adjust picture quality, a zoom in and out, and then auto exposure button. And then up here is to flip the camera around 180 degrees. So we're gonna get, um, we'll see how that does actually. And I have with me today, just a quick example in terms of what I'm hoping to be able to achieve is, uh, we have a mechanical switch right here, and we have a switch opener tool. This is from Gateron. I've already built a keyboard or two. If you follow me on my social channels, such as on Twitter and Instagram, I've posted up a photo or two. This is a super useful tool. Um, I'll link, if this is on Amazon, a link to this to pick that up to open up the switch. And then here is the stem holder, really used for any sort of small electronics. This will be used to hold stems and springs and whatnot. So this also includes an additional extension as well, um, about five inches or so. So let's go ahead and get this plugged into the computer. That's of course what's important 
and see how the quality is and everything else. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back. So we have now this hooked up to my Razer laptop, which is right out of frame. I am using OBS to capture um, what is from the camera here. So right here up top, we have this autofocus button. So when you press that, it'll not autofocus, but it'll also optimize the the image quality of what is being captured so depending on what lighting conditions if you move around if you have something that you need closer in frame you can press that and it'll automatically attune and adjust to make it a better image using ai here is also a button to zoom in as well and this is where that higher image quality comes into play um, so you can really zoom in and then here this button up here is going to be for various exposures so if you need a higher exposure that's going to be that this button is going to flip the image 180 degrees as well so depending on how you want um, things to look if you need a preview to know kind of more where things are in frame you can press that and whatnot um, so here we are so here is a polio switch right um, Again, this is pretty new to me in terms of mechanical keyboards, but this is focused on the Okio Labs camera. Now, one thing while setting this up and kind of getting things situated, that this these frame, uh, these arms and everything is plastic construction here, um, so it is a little flimsy. Um, so this will kind of wobble a little bit. So you want to make sure you kind of really get this set into place and kind of really don't touch it. Um, I wish this was maybe a better construction something more solid maybe if there was like a solid aluminum of some sort that would be really really nice um, but if we take a look at okay oh, the labs was really ingenious they have little routing cables built into these arm these arms here so that way the cable runs out of the way out of frame and it's not in um, any sort of issue whatsoever so that is really cool so let me just get this back up on point so here we are so let's uh, try this out okay so I'm gonna zoom in one little bit twice actually so here is that switch and you kind of really don't want to press okay there you go so now that's really in focus actually and we'll use the switch opener and this is not the right switch opener all right well like I said now we have a polio switch and a banana split switch. Now the keyboard community and industry gives all these like neat little names to switches and things like that based on the theme, the colors and things like that. So banana split, you can see the banana and the color for ice cream. Here you can see the two different types of switches in terms of how the top housing and the bottom housing come together. We have these two prongs versus this large piece of the top housing this switch will be able this switch opener can open this switch but it cannot open this one so you have to use a different tool to open that guy insert switch into opener just like that the switch is now open now as I'm doing this I'm able to see full view of what I'm doing and you guys on the camera here are able to get a pretty good view and pretty clear might I add of what I'm working on in pretty good detail now granted you don't get a nice like background I would have liked to be able to like see this maybe mounted like having just a smaller weighted base down here versus without the whiteboard of some sort or making it optional without the whiteboard that'd be pretty cool um, so here is the spring, here is the bottom housing with the leaf there, and the two rails, and the center pole of the bottom housing. Here is that stem holding the timing I'm having to maybe potentially work on the exposure. Too dark maybe a little too dark still but if I had better lighting in here it would look a lot better and lighting is going to change the quality of a camera a whole lot I just have 
lighting from directly above. So if you do that, this camera is going to interfere and cast shadows. So you're gonna want lighting coming from either behind you or in front of you. Um, so that way those shadows don't occur. And so there is the stem and as we can see here, Now the exposure is really high and out of focus right now. Still out of focus. It's trying to focus on what's down here, not what's in front of the camera. Okay, that's better. Unfortunately that I have to press it so frequently. So there is the stem. The pull as well. So if we put that back together, just like that and then attach the top housing back onto through the stem. Make sure the clasps are intact. And there you go. So this is the kind of a, a use case of the actual um, the camera. I'm not gonna use the dry erase board capabilities that this has, um, so do it as you wish. And if we take a look at, for example, just regular text, So there's text, exposure is really high right now. See my arm comes into view, it changes the lighting conditions. And then the exposure changes so off so much there. So yeah, so you can read that pretty well. Minus the glare from my lighting. But there you have it. So. 90 bucks, this is definitely a very interesting use case. Um, I kind of like it, you know, outside of this bottom mat portion of it. Um, I wish the construction was a little better. And here we, you can rotate it all around, right? And really be able to instead get it all different types of positions, you know? Um, if you needed it higher up, for a much more wider view here. Now you have a better view of the desk and everything else. And now you just might need to just change your focus and zooming in. But yes, it's important, especially with this camera. And um, it seems like it's probably not the highest quality, but um, with it being on a steady, you can it it's able to work really well because a steady camera does a really good job. Um, so being able to make sure that you have great lighting conditions um, will really improve the quality of the, the camera here, unlike my situation. But just want to give you kind of a, maybe a normal use case of what lighting might be um, for an everyday person. Not everyone's going to have huge lighting setups and stuff like that. But this is the Okio Labs T Plus. Um, they do have a snapshot and recorder program that you can download from their website, okiolabs.com slash download. Um, this again, I'm using OBS to capture anything, which working just fine. This will work with Teams, with Google Meet, with Zoom calls, things like that for any sort of educational or any sort of meeting purposes. Um, you can go through and use this for a different perspective. You'll be able to change your camera input um, depending on what program you're using. And you just switch it over to the Okio T is what it showed up for me. So if you guys have any questions, comments, questions, concerns on the Okio Labs T Plus, let me know down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you Okio Labs for sending the T Plus over for review and checking out for you all. I will see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching. Take care.